Hey everyone, Kyle once again. Welcome back to another movie, uh, movie review for Halloween month. And now reviewing another, cre back to another reviewing another Creature Feature uh, movie. Yeah, so this is this one, this one, another one, another one just sucks, and it's too bad, you know. Could have just something a little bit, just a little slightly bit different though, but, uh, and then plus the way it's a waste of a good actors as well. So, but hey, it was made for it was made for Sci-Fi Channel. What do I expect? So we're viewing today, which is quite funny, is that there was there was a, there was a one title that was released in two thousand one, and then funny enough, the they have a second title released in. 2005. So, always go. Always put in the in the title. Of this this one released in 2005, not 2001. So, it is two titles, but I'm going the one I that, that's right here on the cover. So this one released in 2005, and that is of Hammerhead. Released in 2005. Like the original title for this, the other title for this from t release says released in 2001 is called Shark Man. But um. But this one is is named Hammer because this is supposed to be a ha ha uh, half hammerhead shark, half human, right? But um, <clears throat> yeah. So Hammerhead in two thousand five. It is too bad because it has two good actors in this. Um, it stars William Forsythe, you know, uh, known for playing uh the bad guy in Steven Seagal's Alfred Justice as uh, Richie Madonna, you know, in Steven Seagal. Anybody seen Richie? Ain't number one, Richie did Bobby LeBeau. <laughs> yeah, Williams Forsythe, he was a good villain in that. You know, for Justice, he was in Michael Bay's The Rock. He was like the lead FBI agent there. He was in um, he was also a bad guy in Firestorm with the uh, Howie Long and Scott Glenn. Wasn't really big on Firestorm. I mean, he had some good uh, f uh fire stunts and fire action sequences. You know, I like Scott Glenn. I like William Forsythe. Howie Long, I liked him in Broken Arrow though, but. That's the film where he was trying to they try to make him an action from football player to an action star, you know. But how long he just didn't fit the bill, basically. So, I mean, good Firestone work. I like Scott Glenn and, and Willie Forsythe, and that he was a good bad guy in that though. But overall, Firestone just wasn't, you know, wasn't. It is what um. It was like uh, eh. And William Forsythe, he's been among other stuff though. But I like William Forsythe though. And here, and basically, is one also one of the few times of William Forsythe, he's actually a good guy in this one. Really enough, he's actually a good guy in this movie instead of playing a bad guy a lot most of the times. Well, he was actually a good guy in Michael Bay's The Rock though, though. But um, but but saying as as the lead good guy in this though, yeah okay. Instead of playing a bad guy, he's a good guy in this movie. And you also have Jeffrey Combs is in this as well, you know, from Reanimator. But well, also a whole bunch of horror films as well, though. But but well known for starring in Reanimator. He's in this as well as the scientist who created this Hammerhead, right? But the rest of the cast is but the rest of the cast is just forgettable. I don't remember. I don't remember any other. Remember the cast, the, the, the characters' names. Just generic blend characters in one ear, out there and out the other. And the thing is, yeah, it's a it's a waste of William Forsythe and waste of Jeffrey Jeffrey Combs. The film is so poorly paced, and especially, okay, the story is Jeffrey Combs. He's a scientist, you know, genetic genetic scientist, you know, typical, right? His son had some kind of what was it kidney failure or something like that, and. Jeffrey Combs, he wanted to kill, uh, make a cure for cancer, basically. So basically, they're kind of stealing the idea from Deep Blue Sea, which is much better movie than this. Which Deep Blue Sea is better than any crappy creature feature sci-fi movie. So it's a lot to say there. But still, they take the idea because you know, like in Deep Blue Sea, they want to they want to cure, they want to use these sharks to cure, make a cure for Alzheimer's. But here, it's cancer. And Jeffrey Combs experiments on his son and make, basically make his son into what would is the the creature we have here, you know. And and then they and they also then they steal stuff from from uh, humanoids from the deep, you know, because they want to um, use this uh, 
his son as this thing to like mate with other women, right? Part of it, also part of an experiment on that. So what they 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 take that from humanoids to the deep now, which. But the way Josh, the humans, no, human voice from the deep is actually a better movie as well, which had um, Doug McClure and uh, Vic Morrow, and but especially a lot had it was more practical as well, you know, with the uh, the monster suits and all that stuff, right? Which best thing, when it comes to the wide shots of this thing, it's badly it's bad CGI, especially for bad also my bad effects. But it's funny is there when it does like the, the little bit of close ups of the creature, there is some practical in this. But when it comes to wide shots of the creature, it's just bad CGI. I mean, we don't see, like, the full body suit of this thing, though, which is wasted, though. I mean, when it does, like, close-ups of the face and stuff, it's practical. So there's the little bits in there. But can we just have, like, a, a full, uh, maybe there, maybe there was a person in, this, in a suit, but we just never got to see the full body shots too much of it because there's too much CGI uh, over-glossing it. And this film is so badly edited. I mean, literally, it is literally so badly edited in this movie. I mean, a lot of times it's like a lot of fade to black and then the next shot. And then like a few seconds later, another fade to black and then the next shot, right? I mean... I mean, and also Jeffrey Combs, is all, him he has his research on this island with it for his experiments. And he has his own little uh, army for his, for his protection or whatever. And I forget where the rest of the plot goes because uh, William Forrest, like, he's a former soldier as well. And what else I go with this? I forgot what well, well, the, 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 the main reason the plot of this is forgettable. Which uh, what uh, what uh, way Forsyth's involvement is in this? I know he was it says he was a former soldier. And that's why he, the the him this, uh, go to this island where they, where Jeffrey Combs' research and the other scientists are. I mean, at least but with, with bad ending, especially when the kills happen, a lot of it's done off screen or it's two sh quick shots you need to do and see the kills. I mean. Cutting, cutting, basically cutting, uh, like, um, kind of like tor towards the end of this. I mean, especially with the, all the bad editing. I mean, when they find the, when they're inside, the, when they're inside the lab, right? Um, I mean, like with the what, there's one girl who gets separate from this guy. She's on the ground, and when the creature attacks, it's quick. But her noise. But. uh... It's, a lot of it is cuts away in quick shots. You don't fully see the kill. And then another guy gets killed off screen. I mean, the, the and then when they finally get to the, get to the finally in the place with all the, the all the genetic stuff is like we're willing for these two other women, right? And they find out what they're experimenting with the experiment with the women, the pregnancies, but. You know, taking the, like the ideas from humanoids the deep, right? And that's funny. Like I said about how the quit the bad editing in this is like, okay. William Forrest, like he sets up this this little trap, right? He puts this like this, oh, this uh, chemical thing on top of the door. When they open it, it'll drop and it'll explode, right? And the person will catch on fire, right? So one random guy opens the door. The thing falls. It explodes and the guy is set ablaze, right? Well, while the guy is on fire screaming, and then just, like I said, it fades to black, and the next shot is them just going out the window. Or, when the one of the scientists has different cones with, she quits and she doesn't want to deal with this experience anymore. She, up, she meets up with the, with, the, with William Forrest William Forrest and the others, right? Like, like, there is there 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 is an explosion like this. Some some of the, some of his men they so Jeffrey Combs' men they shoot the car cause an explosion, and she's on a cliff right. Well, as the girl as the girl is falling off the cliff, it cuts to really a, a split second shot of Jeffrey Combs looking at a tube, and then cuts back to the the woman falling off the cliff. I'm like, how is that relevant? 
why was I show that split split a split a split split second shot of different codes looking at a tube for a split second, then cutting back to the woman falling off the cliff? I'm like, what is what's the explanation in that? None. And then another woman, another woman who gets to get all these uh, itchiness boils or whatever itchiness on her hands or whatever. And she goes to the water, tries to wash it off, but they say, "Oh, hey, don't stand too close, don't stand too close, get out of the, get away from the water." But no, she doesn't listen. And she then, she gets killed off. Uh, she's dragon gets killed off screen. And then, and then when they get to a helicopter, um, they shoot. They shoot some some of some of the men. Some some of Jeffrey Combs's men, and they they also have another helicopter. Willie really Forsythe is shooting at that. And then their helicopter gets sh gets shot, and it's like, um, we say, oh hey, it's going to explode, right? And it's like, okay, it's gonna get, it's gonna explode, right? But the funny thing is, they're in front of the helicopter, right? They say it's going to explode. There's some, but the, already there's some flames right in front of it. I'm like, it's not if it's on fire, but it's like the fire is like like two like ten feet in front of them for what it looks like, and then it explodes. I'm gonna say this is this is so badly edited and all the quick cuts and everything else and then when they get the woman another guy gets captured they um the one guy gets it gets a set gets a sacrifice to the to the the shark the man shark you know but the thing is though they put him is they dip his head in the water but you don't see the guy die though it's just cut away completely you know, funny thing is, when you, when you do like a, a mutant shark like this that walk that can walk on two legs, I rather watch um, Peter Benchley's Creature with Craig T. Nelson and Kim Cattrall. Um, that did it better. An experimentation of a, of a mutant shark, right? Going from shark form and then to growing arms and legs, right? That did a whole lot. That thing did a whole lot better, you know. I mean, a lot the the the, the effects of the shark, especially the suit, you know, and all that looked really well done. But um, that just did it a whole lot better. And also, uh, what was his name? Um, G generic Gary Carl Esposito. You know, he had the guy, the guy who was from Breaking Bad, and um. Or he was also the video game, the video game guy in the beginning of Maximum Overdrive, right? Getting killed by the arcade guy, but that was young him though, right? Um, Esposito. But I know her from from uh, Jer what was it, Jerry Carl, uh, Breaking Esposito from Breaking Breaking Bad. I'm trying to say the words again. I mean, he was he was also in Peter Benchley's Creature. He's the guy who created the thing, right? But that just felt that just that just did a, and that was a mini series and that did a whole lot better than this with like a doing with a mutant shark right. I mean yeah they chose a hammerhead because they chose a hammer. They said the Shepherd Cone selected a hammerhead shark because it had different uh, type of uh, stem cells or whatever different different from others. So that's why they went with a hammerhead. I mean yeah granted though it's different because it can't be just just like because a lot of times it's a great white shark you know so I mean red water uh, red water with Lou Diamond Phillips. It was that was a bull shark though. It wasn't a great white. It was a bull shark, a big one though. Or deep blue sea. Those are mako sharks, not great white. So, a couple of the shark films that did things differently. Here they want to do with the go with a hammerhead, you know. So instead of a great white, okay, different though. But instead of the, the, the but the thing is, the film just sucks all around because it's just the it was. It is one of the very, very poor edited. It was a very poor edited movie that I've one one of them I've ever watched because a lot of it is just like faded black, faded black, faded black, and then a few seconds another faded black transition, right? So, and then well, um, the well the woman that uh, that that's in love with uh, the love interest of William Forrest, like she gets strung up, right? Guess because Jeffrey Combs wants to use her to for the for the shark for his son to mate with her. Which is quite funny. He doesn't strip her all the way. He just left her with a bra and her, and her, and her shorts on. Little short shorts. I mean, why? Because we see um, we see a lot a lot of large tubes of women naked for his experiments. But no, he just has to leave her bra and shorts on. Okay. Well, because it's 
Well, it's RA. Why not show a little skin there? And and then it's in the tank, and then uh, but then the shark up uh, the the. Well, if it's supposed to be, well, it keeps saying, oh, it's my son, though, but he'll remember what to do because it's humanistic, whatever, you know, but, nope, he's wrong, though, because the shark, because the, his son, his shark son, to say, bites his arm off, and then William Forsythe comes in, like, sprays it with this thing, which is bad CGI as well, like, CGI liquid coming out of the nozzle, can't have real liquid, you have to have the CGI that crap. And then it kills it, it blows up CGI style. So they destroy the lab, and um, now before when William Forsyth shoots uh, Jeffrey Combs in the back, he's still alive, he was going to shoot the woman, but then Jeffrey Combs goes and shoots him. And then the lab explodes, and then the woman and William Forsyth, they run out. Bad, if they're running... Bad CGI background explosion, bad, very bad. So they get on, they get on a boat and they leave. Oh boy, such bad editing in this movie, you know. I mean, a lot of the times the ki the kills are off screen or you don't, or it's too much chiggy chiggy or quick editing, you know. It's just you don't see the kills for for pretty much all of them. Um. Bad, bad, bad CGI. Very, very bad CGI. I mean, like I said, the close-ups of the shark, like this when it shows like the eye or even a head pop up close range, practical, okay. But the thing is, though, the wide shots of it was bad done. It was bad done CGI. And so like I said, Peter Benchley's creature did it better. Or better, you're taking ideas from Deep Blue Sea. You know, we're doing using sharks to find a cure for you know. Here it's cancer, but in Deep Blue Sea it was Alzheimer's. So you still suffer from Deep Blue Sea, and you still from humanoids of the deep as well. Why the shark to mate with a with women? So you, you steal that from from that. But humanoids of the deep is, is is a better movie than this. So and uh, I mean Deep Rising, I love Deep Rising. Yeah, the CGI. Yeah, I, one thing I say, yeah, the CGI doesn't hold up from 19, even from nineteen eighty. But the thing is, though, I the, I love the cast. I enjoy the score, the directing, and the characters and story. Deep Rising is such an under is one of my, as as a favorite as a is a favorite of mine, and it's highly underrated. Highly underrated. Same with like goes like other ones like creature feature of the deep movies like Leviathan, or which that's that's another great one as well, Leviathan. But like I said, Deep Blue Sea, you know. Peter Benchley's creature, or even a little Peter Benchley's the Beast. Even the giant squid uh, was practical as well. A little bit of CG here and there, but the thing is, a lot of times the for the most part, the the giant squids was was practical. And plus, I, 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 William Peterson was in it from CSI and Manhunter and Fear. I, I enjoyed Peter Benchley's The Beast. Peter Benchley, Peter Benchley's The Beast, uh, growing up, watching with my dad on sci-fi when it was a miniseries. Much better than this. And it's sad. It's a, wa it's a waste of it's a waste of William Forsyth and a waste of... Yeah, it's cool to see him play, see him play a good guy in this movie. Yes. But think, oh, he's wasted in this. And Jeffrey Combs as well. Jeffrey Combs is wasted too, you know. It was a lot of was just boring and very lack of lack, lack of the hammerhead. But when it does, it's either the very close up shots of the camera when it's up, up in the camera's face, it's practical. But wide shots of it, bad CGI and bad effects and bad editing as well. Like I said, in and out fade transitions, in and out, bad CGI background the explosion when they're running away, stupid editing. Like I say, I can't get past it, you know. But yeah, Hammerhead. Another, another. It was, it was made for sci-fi, so you should know better, you know. Because like, not, like pretty much ninety-nine point nine percent of sci-fi creature feature movies, they suck due to like it's very low budget and very cheap effects, you know. 
So yeah, so Hammerhead or Shark Man, you can say. You can look that top from 2001 or this one, Hammerhead from 2005. Take your pick. But I'll call it the one I have right here. So yeah, Hammerhead. It sucked. Another 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 creature feature sci-fi movie sucked. But anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next review for uh, Holy Month, and we'll see you next time. Later.